Dogs are too good for us. Uh, we do not deserve them, and therefore we must do everything we can to make their short lives as happy as possible. Even if that means descending into a nightmarish fantasy world to make them young and healthy again. Tried to get the bigger dog on my lap for that too. She was not having it. Welcome back everybody, I'm Jake the Scary Story Guy, and today we're talking about something that's not really a scary story at all. I'm speaking, of course, about the latest Stephen King novel, Fairy Tale, which came out a couple of months ago. Now, if you missed my last video where I announced that I'm going to be reviewing every single thing Stephen King has ever written, you may be saying to yourself, what do you mean it's not a scary story? It's Stephen King. But though King's horror stories are undoubtedly his most famous contributions to the world, a lot of people don't realize just what an accomplished accomplished author he is in other genres. Now here, King revisits the fantasy genre, an ocean he's already waded into with his seven book Dark Tower series, but he's also sprinkling enough from other genres to give this book its own really kind of distinct flair. Fairy tells the story of a teenage jock who befriends an old man and his dog, but when the old man dies, circumstances catapult the young boy and the dog into a, another world on a fantasy-like adventure. Now let me start off with some fine print here, okay? I love Stephen King. I actually wrote a horror story a while back that was inspired by Stephen King's short story, The Man in the Black Suit. My narrator in that story is writing on his 75th birthday, and he begins with the line, it's official, I'm an old man. And one of the very first things you notice when you open this book is that Stephen King is now himself officially an old man. All traces of youth are gone from his photo on the back jacket cover. In fact, King celebrated his own 75th birthday just a couple of weeks after Fairy Tale was released. But the place you really notice King's age, I think, is in his writing. He's just so much more reflective than he used to be. He's writing from a teenager's point of view here, which you never fully buy, and we'll get to that in a minute, but he's doing so with an old man's mentality. I think King's writing used to be really frantic, right? Read his early works, and it gives the impression of a man who's just got so many ideas in his head that he's got no choice but to just kind of machine gun fire them all onto the page. It was the best of King and the worst of King because on the one hand it resulted in these just astonishing bursts of creativity, stuff where how the hell does anyone come up with this? But it also made his writing kind of frenetic and, and wandering. A lot of his earlier stuff could, you know, we'll put it kindly, could have been tightened up a little bit. In Fairy Tale, his writing is so deliberate. He really lingers over subtle details about life, things that only an old man Man could have learned through experience to appreciate. He's also grown quite philosophical. There's there's a lot of wondering and musing on these pages, you know, reflections on how things might have turned out differently, how the, the wheel of time spins on the smallest choices, all that, which is really interesting, especially for a constant reader of Stephen King such as myself. However, it needs to be said, he simply does not make a convincing teenager. I understand that the narrator, Charlie, is meant to be in his 20s writing about his teenage years, but that's not really a distinction worth making here because Charlie simply does not sound at any point in this book like he's on the fair side of 60. And I actually found this quite jarring in parts, okay? Charlie's an extremely conscientious kid, often to the point of surrealism, but whatever, he's the hero of a fantasy story. It's more the fact that he says the line, that was a damn cold April, as if that's the sort of detail that anyone besides your grandfather would <laughs> would ever remember or comment upon. The pop culture references in this are just out of control, too. This is not a kid talking about Marvel movies. This is a kid who recognizes a dog's name as, quote, radar, like the guy from M.A.S.H. This is a kid who says that in 2007, Psycho, The Thing, and The Exorcist were, quote, required 11-year-old viewing. Now, as someone who was 14 in 2007, let me, <laughs> this is simply not true. Maybe The Ring, uh, The Grudge, far inferior movies, I'll admit, but such was the zeitgeist. Some of these mistakes are so egregious that they actually kind of cross over the barrier into like, oh, endearing old man now territory. At one point, a character is gifted something called ear pods which, as far as I can tell, don't exist and have never existed, so I assume King meant AirPods, but the gift was received several years before 2016 when the first model of AirPods were released, so... There was one dated cultural reference that I found delightful, though, which is when the narrator describes a dog as being, quote, like Cujo in that movie, which... <laughs> 
I mean, that's how you know you're one of the all-time greats. You're such an icon that you can just drop references to your own work and everyone's gonna be like, oh yeah, of course a kid growing up today would have heard of a bunch of Stephen King stuff. So that rules. Still, you, you never, ever lose sight of the fact that the narrator is a guy in his 70s pretending to be a guy in his 20s. So, you know, your mileage may vary as far as how much that matters to you. Now, as for the story itself, I actually think King is at his best when the story is most grounded. The first 150 or so pages of this book are really just build up. It's all fairly domestic, nothing otherworldly has happened yet. In fact, it's page 163 where Charlie finally tells the reader, quote, this is where your disbelief begins. And those 163 pages were absolutely my favorite part of this book. He's, he's just so damn good at making you like believe in these characters he's created and just wanna hang out with them. It's the part of the book where King feels the most like himself, in my view. He's also unbelievable at capturing the, the bond between people and dogs. The dog in this radar, uh, like the guy from MASH, is probably my favorite character in the book, right? And he actually is a character. He's not just like some prop. He's, he's actually really uh, essential to the plot. It's sentimentality, yes, but with enough grit and, and realism on the side to make it feel earned. Now, once we cross that threshold of disbelief and enter this fantasy world, Empis, that King has created, that's where the book starts to become hit or miss for me. Now, some of it I quite like. There's a beautiful princess who can't speak, an old lady who guards the, the, the gates of the realm, uh, this whole, you know, lore and history of this kingdom, and it's all, I'm, I'm on board for it. It's an effective setup. But once we really start diving into the specifics of what's gone wrong here, what is torturing all the people of this kingdom, I'm just kind of meh about it. All great fantasy stories have a really compelling antagonist, right? This terrifying threat. And I feel like that's what's missing here, primarily. Every time the antagonist of this realm was discussed, my eyes were just glazing over. There are also a couple of side characters in this fantasy world that are just desperately annoying. And there, she, there's one in particular. She's kind of like a gimmick character. She talks in a certain way. And a couple of pages in, you just realize, like, oh my god, she's gonna talk like this the whole time, isn't she? There's actually one moment where Charlie gets rescued from danger by this character I'm specifically thinking of here, and you just, it, she's so annoying that you're like, no, go, go back to the danger, right? Like, anything but her. I think my, my ultimate assessment of this book is that Stephen King is obviously a master storyteller, but that some of his stories feel more worth telling than others. And with Fairy Tale, I felt like the story that was told in the first 150 pages or so was absolutely worth telling, right? This is King at his best. The rest of it, I thought had a promising setup, but I just ended up not being nearly as invested in. I was gonna give Fairy Tale three stars out of five, but damn, if King just didn't write such a good doggo, so that's enough to bump it up, three and a half. All right, guys, thus ends my first actual review in the Stephen King series. Remember, I am going to try and review all of King's published works, as well as the big movies and TV shows based on them, so stay tuned for that. But of course, I'm also gonna be talking about plenty of other spooky stuff. I've got a Christmas special coming your way soon. So thank you for watching this video, and here's hoping you survive to see the next one.